Welcome to this week's Life on the Hulls, everyone. I've just finished glass and the hull extension for my starboard side, and uh, and I'm about to start on the port side. I've just been grinding all of the uh, excess off, ready to add those molds that I have for the extension on that side. So rapidly moving along here, and I'm so excited about this part of the build because I'm really starting to finish the construction of the major parts. Now, last week's video just was absolutely fantastic. I got such an amazing result and uh, and so many brilliant comments saying, congratulations, well done, the team. And, uh, and although it was complete chaos, we got the job done and my mates, honestly, although they talked their bloody heads off, they really did concentrate on getting the job done in the end. So very, very proud of them, proud of us, and uh, yeah, really, really stoked to get that done. This week is just basically the beginning of the hard work. I thought it was hard, and I actually have been working so hard trying to get everything consolidated and ready to join and tab the entire thing. So let's get into it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and please share it out, guys. I'm, and, uh, and I'm really proud of our channel, and I'm proud of the build. As you can see behind me, it's all happening. All right, we've come in, it's uh, two days later. Let's demonstrate, Jen. Demonstrate what? Demonstrate how solid it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's so solid. We're just jumping around going, wow, solid. It's complete jump. <laughs> Look at that. This boat is as solid yeah, mate, as a rock. That's right. And if we get in here, hang on a sec. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> We've got major excitement here two days on. Um, we've come in today, we're gonna patch up all of the gaps that we've found in the epoxy. And, uh, and basically, it doesn't move, the whole thing's tied together. The only thing I would say is because the gunnels aren't done yet around the edges, um, I've just gotta be a little bit careful. I don't glue parts down, so that I've still got a little bit of flexibility. So what I'm gonna do now is I've just come in here and I've identified some spots here here, along here, wherever there's blue masking tape, that's where I was unable to bond. But now because it's glued down, I can back it and I can then fill the gap with epoxy uh, up in here, little spot in here. And basically anywhere where it's a little bit low, because what I intended to do was sand this back now and then tab it as well. So the tabbing, this composite angle was just predominantly just there to catch the glue. And then I'll be able to sand that back to level and not get it nice and fine and then be able to run my tabbing, have that beautiful sort of tab surface rather than a composite angle. But yeah, that's looking pretty good. I've gone right through the boat and identified all the areas. You can see the blue tape, I don't know if you can see it, but there's blue tape with little arrows showing me where I need to fill now. There's another one up here. So that's been critical. There's little spots in here that need to be filled. All I want to do is make this solid and then I can sand it back to the point that it has a nice curve. There's a lot of filling to do and uh, Janet's onto it. Janet's on the mixing station again. And the other thing we've done, which is really bloody exciting for us because it's eye on the prize stuff, is you'll notice I've got pictures of the finished product because it's not so much for me, but it's for all the people that come to visit. I'm trying to show them on my phone what the finished product's gonna look like. Cause they walk in and go, oh my God, what's this? But then I can show them something like that to give them a bit of a feel for what it's gonna look like. And then they have this um, real aha moment and go, oh, now I know what it's gonna look like. And uh, I've had that eye for a long time cause I've had privy to the photos and Janet and I have been, been viewing them. And there's another one here. That's one I like. Yeah, so that one's a cracker. A cracker. That shows you the whole bedroom so you can see it there and there so as you walk in very very exciting we're we're having a bit of a buzz today yeah so we're going to get on to it now right out, get mixing get mixing <laughs> all right captain i'm the only captain here from now on after saturday's seven captains <laughs> You can, make, you can take all responsibility. Seven captains in one place in a small boat. It was freaking hell. It was pretty scary, wasn't it? It was funny. It's just chaos. It's really funny. Listen, I just kept out of it. Yep, it was funny. All right, so this joined back in the stern cabin here. You can see here, it's a bit hard to see, but right under there is where the glue is, and I made sure I went right in. Now, I'm going to cork this even more. Now, Zach's already done the one up under there, but I'm going to basically go right along here, 
along the front to make sure that I've got a good sort of fillet and then I'll be filling and changing the chemistry back to the vinyl ester um, and tabbing this entire region back to the hull and uh, and along the front and back along the other side just making sure that I've got it completely filled and, and avoid any sort of um, separation of this area here underway. We're deep in gap filling. You can see here along the margin here we're at a bit of a gap. We've actually totally sealed it and filled it and it's marched at the back so there's no way of it escaping over the other side. The trick is with soundproofing and obviously waterproofing is to just get tons of it in there so that we make sure that it's all um, sealed and then that's also avoiding any sort of springing in any areas we're going to do up on that main bulkhead there in a minute and uh, and janet's been in here tidying up behind me and then what we're going to do we're going to get rag with some acetone or metho on it and just clean the epoxy off the composite angle because i'm going to change chemistries from epoxy now to vinyl ester tabbing and that's really important that we get that um that that seal um, and, and not have that epoxy and vinyl ester bond because it's not going to be ideal in the long run. It might sort of initially bond, but it won't bond over years' time. It'll start to delaminate. So we need to make sure that we're clean of epoxy on the wood and on the composite angle, and then we can go forward. Doing a good job, Dal. Putting some composite angle along here that's going to join to the um, walkthrough transom and then I'll be able to tab it all together. So essentially it's all one piece. And then we've got that area that Zach did up in the back there, um, basically already done. And then another piece there that's going to join the side of the transom. And then what I'll do is I'll fill all of this with foam and bond it to the back here to make it all one piece. Hey, Jack. Yeah? I reckon Yeah. we've got the neatest... <laughs> Patches in the world. You reckon? Definitely. These are just friggin' beautiful. <laughs> I mean, they are so neat. And now Russ is talking about putting me inside one of these. End one, apparently. There's some that you need to reach that oh. you can't get in. Oh, it's been. Careful. Um. Careful. <sighs> If anyone saw the way that that's constructed, you're looking at perfectly neat. There's no gaps and it's just, I'm so happy. I'm, I'm really proud of the way we've done that. That was worth spending five or six weeks in there to get it done like that. Because, you know, inaccessibility, but, you know, it's perfect. I've um, been taping up around the hatch because it's quite jagged so that when I go in and squeeze in I don't cut myself to pieces. I'll probably wear long pants when I do that. We don't have big hatches on the front. I'll probably just wear long pants to do that on a cold day. I've got a tiny problem. It's spot on, absolutely perfect fit, except right at the very stern, down in here, I've got a 15 millimeter underbite. 15 millimeters is similar to what I had up the front. Now I can wedge it out here. I can actually push that out and join it. And that's not gonna be an issue, but down there, my problem is that the deck and the hull are around 15 millimeters out. So what I've chosen to do rather than split the deck in this case, because it's a very simple fix, is those black lines down there on the bulkhead, I'm gonna cut out that 15 millimeters and then ratchet strap the side of the hull in to meet the deck in this case. It's much easier to do this than to split the deck and do all that overhead work that I was doing before and then all that fairing. I can fix this in probably an hour's work uh, to save myself a lot of extra work there. Now that wouldn't have worked up in the bow because there were so many bulkheads already in place that that 15 millimeter gap simply would have been 10 bulkheads to rectify, whereas this one here is just one. And then that'll bring that home into its position. So the other issue I've got is that the hull is this thick and the deck 
is not quite as thick. <laughs> it's only around about um, probably three quarters of that, not even that. So there's, a, there's about five millimetre gap there that I'm also compensating for here. But once I get back to here to the midships, it's perfect all the way along, slightly out here. I'm not that worried about that. I don't want is fairing to be out at the stern. And where I have the aluminium rub rail all the way down the side or gunnel strip, I want that to look fair from below and above. That's close, but not close enough. Need another, need another half a centimetre to bring it all in. And then it's actually improved all the way along that line. All I need to do is wedge it out in there and, uh, and it's down in position. So that can stay there until I finish repairing that. Now, I'll be the first to agree that uh, a lot of comments last week said it was a long time coming, the joining of the deck and the hull. But all of the processes that I went through were pretty much essential prior to joining the hull on the deck. And one of those was the modification of the helm station. Now, the problem with the helm station was that there was an unreasonable step and, uh, and it wasn't really a workable thing. So I'll just take you back to when I made the module for the uh, internal starboard side companionway. I made an extra one to actually use for the helm station. And uh, you see here that I actually spend a lot of time just sitting and thinking and pondering. It's not all work here on the hulls. There's a lot of thinking going into this. And the ability now for me to move forward on these big projects, now that the deck and the hull is joined, is just exponential. I can do the hard top. I can do the helm station. I'm so heavily into it. All right, so I've got this module lifted up to sort of determine the rough cutout. Now it's taken a bit of thinking. I've been sitting here pondering for some time the best way to attack this because essentially this part here, essentially it's no longer structure of the boat. The whole boat's being held down by all these other members and now this cockpit's glued down to the floor. Um, I'm not overly worried about this part here. So this is going to be removed and form an internal uh, storage all the way under here. So once this drops basically from here all the way across to there, it's going to be uh, going to be storage. And, and so in reality, I could cut this whole thing out from there right across. But what I want it to do is I want it to sit in place. So I'm going to do a few cuts. It's going to be the death of a thousand cuts here um, to, to determine where it's actually going to sit in the grand scheme of things. So if I cut it down from this one here and then drop it into place that means that this will sit against the cut line um, and that's obviously not going to work but it'll give me a rough idea as to the beginning of the cut oh what have i done <laughs> oh it always scares me when i do something like this but it's going to be a brilliant modification i'm actually going to have to continue this wall all the way to the end there and the storage will be whatever i've got under the stairs because that's actually the bed may get a little bit more but i'm not sure i want to sacrifice internal space for external space so we'll work on that but yeah that's a big cut <laughs> and uh that's a pretty scary modification but yep all good come up on a nice quiet sunday arvo uh, just had a nice big walk with the dog and i thought i'm going to get some grinding and cutting done uh, there's no one here, the business is shut across the road for the weekend. It's always nice to do the massive work on the weekends when I've got a bit of quiet time. Um, that way I can sort of go for it because I'm in an industrial state, I'm sort of allowed to do that. I've made some serious progress with this module here. I've actually cut off the flange. I was originally thinking I may integrate the flange into the wall, but it's just not going to happen. I can't quite get it to align. By cutting the flange off, I can get it to sit flush against the wall there. Now, I've put a piece of composite angle underneath here just to give it some support. And I've got another piece of uh, cardboard and a, and a drum sitting there, and it is dead level. So it's absolutely perfect. And what I've got to do, I've got to decide what I'm going to do with this bit of floor here because this will have a wall all the way across here 
and into there all the way to here. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to be removing some of the cabin inside. I'm losing a bit of headspace to give me a really big helm platform here, which is sort of always desirable. We do tend to spend a lot of time uh, sitting up there, and that's going to be an area where we'll spend a lot of time together sitting on that big double seat that I intend to have across here. Um, and I can sacrifice a little bit of roof space in the cabin and gain a lot of floor space here, but they'll actually gain a bit more height above their bed down here i'm going to have to leave this so it's all a three-dimensional thing here and you have to be very very careful where you cut because if you cut at the wrong place you might end up with some massive restoration having to be done at a later date so i think the key to getting this thing fitted properly is removing the flanges i mean they're not going to be needed this is going to have a nice rolled edge to a wall here which will have a door in it underneath accessing the storage i've gained on the front here so cutting off this flange will give me a true indication of how this is going to sit better off to get it cut off now and then i can really start to work out how i'm going to fare it whether i'm going to curve it i would like to maintain the same sort of contours that we have here on this module on the back side of it because it is nice and rolled and the nice thing about that is it's obviously soft if you bump into it particularly if you run into that in the big sea you don't want to be hitting a sharp edge so i'll be likely putting in uh, probably a 30 mil foam wall here all the way through there that I can then taper and shape to the top to get the same sort of profile as we have here. I could possibly do it with 20 mil. I'll work it out once I get it all cut. But for now, I'm just going to cut that flange off and, uh, and we'll have a really good indication of how this is going to sit. Just want to highlight the importance of not hacking into things and really thinking it through. I've been pondering this for a good hour or so. Um, there's... A whole lot of usable material here that I can reuse in the rebuild of this helm station, particularly the floor. What I've worked out is that I can actually reuse this panel here, and when I cut this out, I'm actually going to cut it back right to here so that I'm increasing the floor space. At the moment, I've only got about 80 centimetres. I want about 1.4 metres of floor space at our helm, given the amount of time we intend to spend here. Um, if I were to just cut this in pieces and chuck it out, then first I'll be wasting it and I'm going to have to reinvent a lot of it later on. Uh, but I've already got the shapes. So if you're careful and you cut correctly, now I've given this a ton of thought, um, I should be able to move this panel back into here so that this moves back to here and gives me a nice little soft edge here. So I'd have to recreate this. That's a day's work to create that shape there back in there or even more. Um, and the other thing is that this floor here, if I cut correctly, should be able to form some of the adjoining floor to the staircase. And the only thing is though, this line here is actually the new level of our floor. So it's about 18 centimetres higher, which is about the normal height of a step, which is what I've done to increase our visibility when we're helming the boat. Um, but if I were to cut this all out, it's certainly not just going to move back. What I'll then have to do is cut out another section of this part and join this part to this part to make that all work. But I think that's so much better than just simply hacking away at what I've already got. And there's going to be some rebuilding needing to be done on the inside there and, uh, and ultimately um, just butchering something for the sake of it can be a little bit of a dangerous endeavour and I really am trying to reuse whatever I can to avoid uh, reproducing it. Now the other thing too is this curve here uh, is something I'd like to maintain when I do the reshaping. So if I cut it where it's flat here and not at the bottom of the curve, I'm going to actually retain the curve with the piece as I lift it up and move it back. So it's gonna create a lot less shaping for me. Uh, there'll only be a section this long rather than, you know, another meter and a half. So a lot of areas that I have to think about here, how I'm gonna cut this precisely and carefully before I go right ahead. But I think the integration is reasonably simple, even though it looks very complicated. So that's exactly where that by being able to lift this up and back, yes, I'm gonna have a little bit of a join here to, to fabricate, but I'm gonna save myself a ton of work if I can just not 
go bullet the gate and slash this to pieces and then I'm gonna have to do a lot more work later on. So that's my thinking. Uh, God knows if that's gonna be the right thinking. Get a few comments that say, why don't you just build it as it is and go sailing? Well, that'd be no fun, would it? I'll have nothing to talk to you about. So anyway, let's get into it. Let's do the deed. So my wife Janet is um, pretty keen on sailing, but she's not that comfortable without an escape hatch. So I've been working pretty hard at ideas that I can come up with to, to solve this problem. So, so I cut one out. <laughs> wow, that's a big hole. That is a very big hole. And uh, <laughs> I might not be getting any dinner tonight. And it's pretty radical. There's not many people that have got the balls to cut up a perfectly good boat. Well, I have because I wasn't happy with the way it was. And yeah, it's my boat. I'll do whatever I like. So here we go. Check this out. Oh, this has actually worked a treat. And um, it's looking pretty much exactly what I envisage, except for the big hole. But you know what's great is the piece I cut out will almost fit back in. And the black line there will become the floor all the way in to this section here. That'll drop down and become our floor and give us around about 1.5 metres of helm floor. And there'll be a staunchion here and a staunchion there to hold a big, nice double seat. I now have a very enviable helm set of stairs that looks like it belonged. I'm just going to have to spend a bit of time working out how I'm going to make it look right again before I get divorced because uh, yeah she trusted me Janet trusted me to to do this and I think I'm on the money but god almighty that's a pretty scary scary endeavor